Well, good evening again. Certainly glad to have each of you online. And I'm thankful for the opportunity I have to speak to you once again. As I hope is true for everyone, the uh, sermons this past Sunday at least caused me to think about several different things. One of which was a quote that I had seen recently from one of this country's founding fathers, Thomas Paine. He says, he who dares not offend cannot be honest. Now, our First Amendment right to freedom of speech plays a major role in this concept. For if we are to indeed exercise this freedom, this freedom of speech, we will always risk offending someone with our words. Likewise, someone exercising their own personal right to free speech might offend us. Either way, if anyone is going to use their free speech, they must speak honestly. And if they do speak honestly, they will at some point offend someone or multiple people. Thomas Paine evidently realized this fact. Now, we as Christians need to understand and apply this concept. He who dares not offend cannot be honest. Tonight, I would like to discuss a couple points regarding this, this idea. First, I'd like to talk about the fact that Jesus offended many others with his teachings. We see in Matthew chapter 15, verses 10 through 14, that he offended many of the Pharisees with his hard sayings. Again, Matthew chapter 15, verses 10 through 14, it reads as follows. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Our Lord gave this, this group of Pharisees a label, a category. He called them blind leaders. They themselves were blind. And due to their position in that culture and society, they also led others who were blind just like them. The simple fact that they were offended at the teaching of Jesus showed just how dishonest they truly were. In a different passage, we see that Jesus taught that he was both the son of God and the bread of life. John chapter 6, verses 22 through 69. Now, we certainly won't read that entire passage tonight, but I would like to read a few verses from, of it, from it shortly. Now, in discussing this subject, we find that the Jews murmured and questioned him. Dropping down to verse 60 of this passage, again, John chapter 6, verse 60 starts out, Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he does where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me <clears throat> except, except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of, it is, uh, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. 
Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. From these verses, we note that the disciples murmured about the teachings of Jesus. However, we see the proper attitude to this honest teaching. While many were offended, and no doubt the apostles were offended, but they had the proper attitude, they were willing to follow Christ and his word of truth. Jesus was offensive with his plain, truthful teaching. Secondly, I'd like for us to consider that Stephen, Stephen was offensive in preaching the gospel. We see in Acts chapter 7 that Stephen concluded his sermon in a very pointed manner. Verses 51 through 54. He convicts his, his, his audience. It says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. We see that Stephen was honest about this group's spiritual condition. He obviously offended them by preaching the truth. He discharged his obligation as a Christian, especially as a preacher. Stephen spoke what they needed to hear, and we find in verse 58 that they killed him for it. Yet we read about our Lord's concern for him in verses 55 and 56. As Christians, we too are called to preach that which or to those who are lost. Specifically, the, the things that they need to hear. This will require us to offend others due to the, the truth that we actually speak. Honesty about one's spiritual condition often has this result. We are told that the masses will grow closer to Satan by their own personal choice. This results in a lack of personal desire to hear the gospel. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Paul there says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, repute, re reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou for in all things. Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Sound doctrine is offensive to many, yet we are expected to preach it anyway. We're supposed to preach it when they want to hear it and preach it when they don't. Third, we note that the church, individual congregations specifically and collectively when needed, is offensive in practicing corrective discipline. Sometimes a congregation of the Lord's people must apply corrective discipline. When a member walks disorderly and fails to repent, he or she must have their fellowship withdrawn from them. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 5. Now, I have heard throughout my short time on this earth a rebuttal to this concept. You don't want to destroy what faith they do have. And this is supposed to magically make the need to withdraw fellowship disappear. However, the Lord seems to think it necessary to withdraw fellowship from members who walk disorderly. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14, and 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 8, which reads, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For, for I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath done so this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This is some strong talk from the same apostle who penned 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The church is to purge out the old leaven. The church is to deliver the unrepentant individual to Satan. How is this loving? It's loving because it is seeking that soul's highest good. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. We see that this brother was restored. Though the truth is offensive to some, this is the Lord's will. It is good for the church and the individual Christian. It makes that individual Christian ashamed of their wrongdoing, and it keeps the church pure. No matter how offensive, honesty demands that these rules be followed. Now, as we wrap this up, we are obviously supposed to employ honesty, particularly in our speech. It is part of exercising our freedom of speech, especially as Christians. The Bible plainly teaches such. Yet, when we do use honest words, we will no doubt offend others. As Christians, we should not be afraid of, of offending others when speaking the truth. Now, this is not for the sake of offending others. It's for the sake of speaking the truth. Now, think of some of the offensive topics of today. Immersion in water is essential for salvation. This plain, simple, biblical concept offends many. Men cannot be women and vice versa. This offends a whole host of folks nowadays. One that's been going around for a while. You can't judge me. God knows my heart. This also makes me think of a story that my grandfather tells every now and then. It's probably my favorite that he does tell. It was at a company dinner when he worked for Shell Oil Company. They had you know, a large table and these employees were gathered around it. And before they, they actually ate, they were taking their drink orders. Well, the first few folks asked for some type of alcoholic drink. When the server got to my grandfather, he simply asked for a cup of coffee. Guess what everyone else after him ordered? Coffee or water? That first group thought they were obligated to get some type of alcoholic drink. My grandfather, being a Christian, wanted to be honest before all men, asked for a non-alcoholic beverage. Now, I don't know if anyone else in that room knew he was a Christian, so he could have gotten by with ordering alcohol, but God would have known. Of course, he would have known. That would have been dishonest. I think of whenever I sold my, my last diesel pickup, I finally had a sell or a buyer interested in it. 
and he agreed on the listed price that I had. And we took a test drive of it. He was pleased with the truck. And as we're filling out the paperwork, he says he wants to drop the price on the paperwork by about $1,000, still paying me what I asked for. Well, as much as I don't like paying taxes, it's still honest to record that dollar amount because he would have, had he recorded that lower number, he would have only had to have paid taxes on that lower number. Well, I told him, I said, if you write that number on there, I'm not signing this title transfer. I could have lost the sale of my truck. That, that was a couple thousand dollars that I kind of needed. But by being honest with this individual, he knew where I stood. He didn't know I was a Christian, but I did. God would have known what I'd have done. Now, that's definitely not a pat on my back. It just shows that honesty in our speech involves real-life situations. And we're going to have to figure out how to be honest in every way possible when we deal with people like that. After all, we are expected to follow the example of Christ. Speaking the truth offends people. And even if it might cost us our job, some sum of money, or even our life, we must maintain our honesty. Four quick points to ponder as we actually do conclude this lesson. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 6, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Secondly, we must be careful not to offend our Lord. Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Third, we cannot be the salt of the earth if we preach a sugar-coated gospel. And fourth, the quote of the night, He who dares not offend cannot be honest. I appreciate your kind attention. I'll return it back over to Brother David as he begins his Bible class. Thank you.